Oh, we're playing some Castle Storm? Castle Storm it is. Castle Storm. Clearly, we're not very good at it because none of us have played it before. Yeah, speak for yourself. I'm getting... You're doing, doing some work. Yeah, I don't know Give me those achievements, on. Brandon. Mm -hmm. Come on. I see you firing so, stuff. Yeah, we're trying a new game. We, we've been playing a lot of... Uh, well, we've been putting up a lot of Bloodborne-style videos. We figured we'd change it up with something a little bit lighter, a little bit more fun. So, but... Uh, so, we're doing another or another one of our couch co-op conversations here. Um, and something that I wanted to go, something I wanted to talk about is Assassin's Creed Syndicate was just released. Well, it just announced, not released. And uh, I watched the, the the reveal video and everything. Did anybody, any of you guys read anything about it yet? No. I, I saw a little bit of the video, and that's got about it. All right, so... British people, that's good enough for me. Yeah, it's got a lot of poor people in it. So... Wow. Assassins. No, it's it's that's actually like the basis of the game. Um, so it's it's set in 1868 London, height of the Industrial Revolution. So you are uh, born and bred assassin. Um, you have a twin sister this time, so there's two protagonists. And uh, from what I understand, you could play as the female as well. So I guess this this is the first one with like a female sort of lead for Assassin's Creed. Um, so the thing is, you have it, it. It revolves a lot around the slums, and this is all stuff that I've got from watching it and listening to what they were saying. Um, I've read a little bit of other places, but this is basically my own interpretation of the video. Um, is so you have the big thing they talk about, like they start talking about in the beginning of the video, like class warfare. And, oh, the rich are getting richer, and all the poor people who are breaking their backs, you know, yeah. aren't getting any of the wealth, which obviously is. Kind of lean towards some things that are going on now in current day, so they you know they're playing off of that. So they I'm talk about turned that. Off then. I know they, they, they talk <laughs> about that. Well, it was a huge problem that that was. I mean that kind of that kind of conditions in the in the 1800s, 1900s is why we have like labor unions and stuff now. Um, so they they talk about that. So you're you're part of the slums and you have your own little gang faction. So you have your faction as an assassin, and then there's the Templar faction. So the game talks about, you know, income inequality, and it talks about the, the how you're going to go after the people who are who are exploiting all these poor people, and then like they just stop talking about it, like they don't say it again. Like then it turns into check it out, you have a gang, and then you're an, an assassin, and you have this gang, and then there's Templars, and they have that gang, and you got to go capture these slums, so they can work for you. Hence the name Syndicate. And I'm like, this is. This is nothing like... You, you can just push him down a little bit. I'm not going to He's... Uh, so... <laughs> Gotta get his, his freaking Edgar cameo already. He's whining. So... Already, you're right. I was turned off. I was like, okay, this yeah. could be cool. You know, we're going to start a revolution, except for it's supposed to be based on history. And as we all know, there wasn't a revolution at that time. That was the last Assassin's Creed, and it sucked. Are you trying to say game developers Whoa. don't know history? Well, they're actually, like... Assassin's like Ubisoft is actually pretty good at history in those games. Obviously, okay. it's not spot on, but it's pretty good. It's like whenever you see a movie that's based on real events. Yeah. This is inspired by. Yeah. They have a lot of cool nuggets and stuff, but... So, like, they immediately made it sound interesting. Oh, we're going to have this big thing, and you're going to fight against the, the, the bigger people, the, the, the rich people and stuff. And then they immediately just start gang warfare. And I'm like, this is... What? So, some of the new things with this one, obviously there's a female protagonist. Um, you have a couple new weapons. Um, you now have a hook shot. So you can climb everywhere really fast. Because why would you want to climb in Assassin's Creed? Back so the hook shot's making a comeback. Because we saw it uh, recently as well. Which one? We saw the hook shot recently. Yep, Dying Light. Yeah. So, they showed some gameplay footage. And if anybody out there has played Shadows of Mordor, it plays... A lot like Shadows of Mordor, but with no nemesis system. Um, some of the gameplay was this guy, I want to say, like, he uses his special vision, and he sees a couple bad guys, and he goes, like, a, 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 an ally is being attacked, so if you see a couple bad guys, you go take him out, you rescue your ally, and then you bring him into the fray for you. All right, you're going to fight for me now. And I said, all right, cool, you saved my life. So then it goes to, like, an area, and then there's, like, a slum boss. <laughs> slum boss millionaire. And he has some people around him, so you have to, like, use the people that you rescued to help you, and then you go and you take this guy out. Kind of like the captains in Shadows of Mordor. You have to be sneaky. And then it cuts away, and it shows, like, you with your big gang, and you're going to fight some huge gang leader. Um, 
what was her name? Bloody Nora was her name. It didn't really show, it showed like the first 30 seconds of the battle or something like that. And then it showed you giving this big rousing speech. And, uh, and like, that's where it stopped. Like it, it just showed gang warfare. Like, so it showed me, it showed me Shadows of Mordor in 1860s London. And it's just gang fights, like gang battles. Like, I, I don't know. I kind of thought after Unity that Assassin's Creed was going to, like, really come out swinging. But this wasn't, like, this wasn't it. I expected a lot more. So, this kind of got me thinking about the uh, the games, the non-sports games that are going to yearly release cycles now. Um, it's been a few years, but Assassin's Creed, this is what, their third in a row? Like, just main story, because God knows, I think they released three of them last year. Yeah. They released Unity, they released... Rogue. Rogue, and I thought there was a, a mobile one or something, or a handheld one that they released. There's a as well. uh, Chinese one that released. Chinese one they released. That, that's just like now, though. Yeah, they've been cranking these suckers out. So it seems like the the problem it seems with the Assassin's Creed franchise, and obviously everybody likes to hate on Call of Duty because they went to the same thing, but you really get burned out really quick. And it seems like they run out of ideas. And I know that games like like uh, Battlefield and and, and uh, Call of Duty have different teams that work on it, so it's really like technically a three-year cycle. Yeah. But I like it doesn't like whenever you go outside of Advanced Warfare for Call of Duties, there's very few big jumps in between them to say we've been working on this for three years. Like if you had, I don't know Bethesda. I mean, they, I don't even know if they come out. They, three years is quick for them to turn around a, a franchise. But a, a, a place like that, you hear them say oh, we've been working on it for three years. You're like, okay. That could be interesting. It has, we haven't had one in three years. This could be pretty fun. Let's see what new things they do with it. But, like, it just seems like it's getting so stale. Like, the, the combat is not any different than the other ones. The environment's a little bit different. The story is just looks just as lame as Unity. Unity's story was awful. We just we were playing before this. I showed them. Uh, anybody out there who's thinking about Unity just still don't. It's still terrible. I just played it, like, an hour ago, and... It still gets frame rate under 20. It's got tons of pop in. It's just a very unpleasant experience. It's not buggy. It's just super un like super terrible. It's not smooth. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like since they've been doing this yearly cycle, it's just been watered down. Like They don't do a whole lot between cycles because they just have to get the next one out. Well, they also have, they also have multiple teams working on Assassin's Creed games. So um, the, the thing is that they have different like creative directions from each one. So... You don't know what Assassin's Creed you're gonna get, so I'm still waiting for the next pirate one. <laughs> I don't so know if like, the pirate one. so like the ones who did the like uh, the you know Assassin's Creed Four weren't necessarily the same people, same people who did Three or Unity. But the thing is, Assassin's Creed Four, the combat and everything was still pretty much the same. Like they didn't change a lot. It was the environment of that one I loved. Like the sailing was freaking awesome. The, the ship battles. Yeah, the whole environment was just really cool for The that. fluidity of it made it very... Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it, it was the first worked. like open world Assassin's Creed with pirate ship too. I, don't, I didn't play enough of 3 to know how open world it that was. It was not good. It was kind of like leveled off in silos uh, in 3. Kind so of was, like um, Inquisition? Uh, I've never played yeah. Inquisition. Yeah. Was it like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It just feels like whenever you get stuff like that, you get bored of it so quickly. Like it's it's damn near to the point where I'm like Assassin's Creed. I'll wait for the next one. <laughs> like let's let's play. Let's get a couple. Like it's like Madden anymore with like that and Call of Duty especially. Yeah, I definitely feel that with Call of Duty. I don't really feel that way with Assassin's Creed yet, but I really like Assassin's Creed. But I, I don't know what game I'm gonna get with them. Am I gonna get the same people who made the pirate ship? It's like they have two different creative minds, and what ends up happening is they don't talk to each other. So like. One game's a sequel of a game that happened three years ago. One game's a sequel of a game that happened, you know, two years ago. And it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what I'm going to get. With Call of Duty, I'm just, yeah, flat out burnt out. I don't mind playing Call of Duty now and again, but it takes a lot. Like, I, I bought Ghost because it was the only couch co-op game I could play when I got my PlayStation 4, like when it first came out. Uh, I skipped the, uh, Advanced Warfare, and I want to say I skipped the one before Ghosts. Because that's pretty much a game I only buy if a friend buys it. Like, yeah, I, I, that's never something I go on. I'm like, I really need the next Call of Duty. Right. Mm -hmm. Was it Black Ops before that? Black Ops 2, maybe? Yeah, that's like the... Remember. It's like the last one that I actually remember. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think yearly franchises is, is starting to... 
it, it really waters down these games. Battlefield's another one. They did, like, Battlefield Hardline. This, that was a freaking reskin of Battlefield 4. Because I, I didn't buy it, but I played the, quote, beta. Which is not beta, it's just a stress test. Or just a, get, it's a demo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, that's another one. Like, that one, I swear to God, that one should have been a freaking $30 expansion. That game was terrible. Yeah. As far as, not, okay, it's the same exact thing as Battlefield 4, which has way more content, which is cheaper, which is out on all the same consoles. Like, Battlefield Hardline's a game that never needed to exist. But because they're on the yearly franchise release, that's why I keep saying Battlefront is going to be Battlefield Battlefront. How you I feel promise about promise you. How you feel about, like, game expansions with that, though? See, the, I'm glad you said that, because this is where that goes. This is my idea. And this is something that's been thrown out by a lot of people as starting to turn games into platforms. Like, in, in my example is our favorite game, Destiny. So I think what Destiny's trying to do is I just to want to say platform. I really like Destiny. <laughs> as much well, as Steve fun. says he hates it's, it. I, I have a very love-hate relationship with that game. Um, it... Destiny, I think I, I will commend them on this. On their, It seems like they're really dipping their toes into it without saying it's what it is. Because it seems like if somebody came out and said, we're going to put this game out and all we're going to do is content for three years. To console gamers, that's freaking nuts. PC gamers are a little different because that's the kind of the MMO style. Is you buy the MMO and there's expansions and this and that. They don't they don't release an entirely new game every year for an MMO. They'll, they'll release content and this and that and different things. I think you need a subscription model with going that approach. You know. I wouldn't want a subscription model. I would prefer just expansions. Because you, with a subscription model, you at least get you get added content within that subscription. So, I mean, it may be. But no one's. I'm saying something that'd be viable. Like that's. I don't think that's viable in the console market. I don't think it's viable because you're gonna start adding up like crazy on several of these. But um, I don't. I don't know. I just don't think. I think the expansions need to be down price. Yeah, no, that's that, and I was totally going to go there with that. So here's here's what Destiny and I I'm gonna I, I will commend them on this. I like the idea of a platform. Like they release the game because honestly, like some things change early in a console's life. A game that releases is going to have a lot more changes in the first three years than a game that comes out in the middle of a console's life. Because in the beginning, they're just getting their hands into it. They're really learning what it can do. Once they kind of stable out and everything, then it, it like the, it's not going to be major leaps and bounds for every single game. So if you put out a game like Destiny, and you know it's going to be a two-year cycle, three-year cycle for this game, you get the base game, and after that they do expansions. You put the expansions on a clock so everybody knows, hey, we got this next expansion coming out in four months. I'd say three expansions a year would be fine. That would be fine. Actual expansions, though. Yeah. Like, here's something, and I don't mind them doing what they're doing with, like, their their content stuff, but the things I don't like is the price. 20 bucks is a lot for what they're giving me. That's a third of a game. What those expansions are is not a third of Destiny. As small as Destiny is, that's not even increasing the game by a third for 20 bucks. So that's my problem with that. Mm -hmm. Um but it seems like that would be a cool idea for like Call of Duty or like uh, Titanfall. I really wish Titanfall would do this. They'll never do it. They're uh, too profitable. They sell, like Call of Duty sells 10, 14 million copies a year in this model that they currently have. So there's no reason for them to yeah. go. Now like I, I think me and you have talked about this before, but something like a newcomer into the yeah. like an indie game doing this is a very good idea. Yeah. I think that that could be something like, like as much as like a game that has extremely solid gameplay but may not be able to put out a huge epic game. Like like the people that put out like um maybe even like a Shadows of Mordor style game, like an adventure game, where this would actually be really cool. I'm, I'm coming this is off the top of my head. But could you imagine a game like that? So you start out in this one area. You play the game like a movie through the expansions. Kind of like the uh, the way Telltale does with their episodes, but it's an actual playing game. Mm -hmm. It's not a QTE game. So, like, what would you think about that? Well, I mean, you're kind of going like back Resident to... Like Resident Evil Revelations 2? I, I don't know. Is there something already... Is that what they did? Uh, it's episodic. You kind of... Uh, sorry, go ahead. No. no, you can go ahead. Well, I mean, that, that goes along the lines of what Fable did with uh, Fable 2. 
I mean, they had the full game available, but they also did kind of an episodic approach where you buy the game in five different parts. No, I mean, like, so you buy part one, which can, which, which would be probably the most expensive, or whatever, say it's a $60 game. Yeah. It includes, it would give, you know, and that's where you get, you know, the game's engine and all the game's assets and all this other stuff. So they put most of their work into that, so it'd be most expensive at 60 bucks, And then say, I'll take a history game like Assassin's Creed, because I'm a big history nerd, and this would give me the biggest history nerdgasm of all time. So you do something like Assassin's Creed. You start out in medieval London. So the beginning of the game is medieval London. You have your factions. You play your game. You fight in this, you know, ongoing war or whatever. So you play it. You beat that section. It's going to, obvi- because of the model, it will obviously be some sort of a cliffhanger, like a movie would be. Like Lord of the Rings or something. Next expansion comes out, picks the story up, gives you the next part of your story, and you just keep playing through this big episodic story. It's like a history lesson. Like I think that would be so cool. Yeah, it would be dependent on a very episodic, uh, a very continuum model. Yeah. So, I mean, Resident if, Evil Resolu- Re- Resident Evil Revelations Two does does that. It's it's like a third person shooter. But uh, from what I understand, that that's that's sort of yeah. what it follows. I haven't personally released like the episodes is like you know these little like every few months it's like fifteen bucks depending on how big it is. It adds a whole new like section of the map like a uh, uh, Skyrim if you bought. God. Um, was it the uh, heart? Not hearth. It was um, the other one where it actually added a whole new map. Like you had to get on something and go travel to this new map. Um, same thing happened with. Uh, um, Fallout 3 is a good example where Fallout 3, when they added expansions, they added um, Point Lookout, which was you got on a boat and you went out to this whole new section of the map. There's a whole new like story. Then they also had a Broken Steel, went to Pittsburgh. Which it was really just like inside the steel mill part of Pittsburgh. And then they had Operation Anchorage where you went to this VR and you actually went into the mountains of Alaska and fought the Russians as the war happened in 2077. But I think it would be cool if they did that as a continuum to the story. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking Fallout's probably the perfect platinum type of, yeah. you know, like, not plat- platform to do that stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, you have this open world or you have extra sections you can go to, but you can even do stuff in the same world. It's so huge. Wouldn't it be great if Fallout, if Fallout did a platform where the game one was just before the war started, during the war, and then it ends when the bombs drop? So episode two would be surviving after the bombs episode three or like it would, episode two would be like inside the vaults and stuff like that i mean it would have to be i don't know how they could they would do that maybe it would be you know kind of a so i mean that's a that's a neat concept but if you look from a technical perspective well i mean you take some of the games they have now and get to like 40 50 gigs on mm-hmm. your hard drive you start adding these expansions and they're going to be taking up like half of your hard drive well yeah but if you just buy two games you're at the same point yeah, I mean, it, it it's dependent. I mean, anymore they're getting to the point where everything has to be installed. And you have to kind of get no. I'm saying like space to me that I mean it's the same as if if it's the same. If I'm buying that instead of buying a second game, I'm using 120 gigs regardless if it's one game episodic or if it's two games. Yeah, I, I think it's dependent. I think ultimately, um, it kind of leads into a different discussion. They're going to have to find a new way to do this because storage space will become an issue at one point. Yeah. In time. I mean, the biggest you can throw in a PS4 is, what, two terabytes? And uh, honestly, that isn't, that's not that big considering a, a seven-year life cycle on the console. Yeah, I mean, I, I just now hit my storage limit on my PS4. Oh, I hit mine at Christmas. I had to pull so much stuff off of that thing. I still have 175 gigs. Seriously, what do you have in that? Still 500? Yeah. And you're, like, all digital, aren't you? No. I only got, like, three digital games. Oh, I thought you were all digital. I, I've got, like, two physical Game, so like all of mine are physical except for Dying Light and the freebies. But I think but that would be like a, storage space. That I mean, that's that's really a conversation. It's a completely different conversation. It's a conversation for a different day. It's a good conversation because they seriously, seriously short sided it with a five hundred gig. So, I mean, but everyone does that. When like Microsoft suckers, did that with Vista and RAM. What annoyed me with this thing is these things launched at a time when a one terabyte hard drive was fifty bucks for me to go buy. Like, you're freaking Sony. I'm pretty sure you make these things, or you know who makes these things enough that you could have pulled some arms and got a one terabyte starting. But anyway, that's a rant, not for today. But I think that episodic idea, like, I would totally buy into that. If it, And the problem is, it would be harder for me to buy into a an indie, because they don't have much of a proven record. Like, if somebody said, Fallout 4, this is what we're going to do. I'd be like, sign me up. 
I mean, it, give me that subscription model. Give me whatever you need because I think that would be awesome. If it was a proven studio, well, proven developers. Developer, not studio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, same thing. Proven, I guess. proven developers that uh, have a good track record of a previous game. You yeah. Know, or they, I, I think it would work best if they did it with a well, well received franchise already. Because some franchises just won't lend themselves to that kind of thing. Yeah. But there's so many franchises that like have really big lore and really like they have a lot of history and story and stuff like that. And like I think Mass be, Effect would be perfect. Yeah, and I think it would be really cool to play games like that. Like I would, I'd be down for that. You know, and that also, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing the difference. You can get two very different types of expansions here, depending on the studios that go for the commercialization factor of expansions versus the one who just want to make a good game. So those who are looking to actually create a good game in an episodic format, actually creating content of value, versus those who just you know want a quick buck, which you know, you're a, always gonna have a lot of douchebags. Well, you got some studio or some developers out there who just want to make a good game. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I'd be interested in seeing the difference between that versus you know the things we see currently getting launched year after year. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, that's just a cash grab. Yeah, just about yeah. everything. Yeah. That's exactly what that is. I don't care if you have three different studios working on it. You're going to A, burn me out, B, run out of ideas very quickly, and C, because it's on a yearly format, everybody expects it every year, it will release on time. Yeah. We don't care why, i.e. Unity, Master Chief Collection. Um, wasn't there another one that launched, really, uh, Drive Club launched horrendously? But that's not a game really, really launch. No, it didn't, but it was a game that was said, we have to get this out. Yeah. Said, I'll give you that. That's not because of the yearly release. Um, that, that was just bad development cycle. Was just an idiot. Um, but yeah, because of these things, and, and Master Chief Collection wasn't a yearly release either, but like, that, those were more games that went out on a timeline rather than on a completion. But game. Halo is trying to do that year format. They, they haven't done it exactly every year, but the, you know, from like 2000, what, six or seven to like probably 2012, they were trying that. They probably missed one year. When I mean, they had like Reach, what was that, uh, Halo oh, Wars? ODST. ODST. Oh, I get yeah. that feeling that's more... That's Microsoft uh, is the main driving factor behind that. Uh, the, yeah, well, it's the publisher in all yeah. these cases. I doubt the developer is like, hey, I want to release a game every year and burn myself out. Um, but yeah, I mean, still, it's, it's they're releasing it every year. Uh, let me see. I'm, let me see if I can find the Halo release dates. Well, well I mean, to be fair with Halo... There was a few interesting concepts that released in some of their year after year. I mean, you uh, had... So, hold on. Uh, real quick, since I got it pulled up. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 2001, Combat Evolved. 2004, Halo 2. 2008, Halo 3. 2009, had Halo Wars and ODST. 2010, had Halo Reach. 2011, had Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. 2000... Or no... Yeah, 2012 had Halo 4, 2013 had the Spartan Assault, 2014 had Master Chief Collection, and this year they've got Spartan Strike and Guardians. Like, you can see, I mean, you can't see because you're looking at this, but if you go to the Halo Wikipedia, you can see there's big chunks at the bottom and then just start vomiting out Halo stuff. Yeah, but... So about 2009 is when they went hard. Between, between 3 and I'd say 3 and 4, I'd say they did some interesting variants on their normal formula, which... I think, given those yearly releases, it actually worked fairly well. Yeah. Um, after that, I, I can't really support it. And some much. of them were re-releases, too. Though. Yeah, some yeah. of those were re-releases. Like, uh, it depends, uh, and I don't know which one of those were actually done, because there's also, uh, that was also the point when Bungie was getting out of the mix, 343 was jumping in. Like, I don't know. I, I don't really see, I don't think Halo was a yearly franchise. Yeah. But. I mean, it was for, it was for... What was it, 2008, you said, to 2013? Well, that was um, just a bunch of weird stuff. 2000... Yeah. So Microsoft just totally cash cowed. ODS I think 10, 10, 11, or 9, 10, 12, and 13 were all individual games. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly when, when you said the re-releases. I think that was their year-after-year year cycle. Yeah, that, that was, was their cash grab. Yeah, that was. I mean, granted, a lot of people wanted it, so that's fine. I mean, because you made a big, uh, big leap from the very first Halo to the collector's edition re-release. And yeah, I mean, hit hit the button right now and you'll see it. Oh uh, yeah. 
There's there's your jump. Plus that was like that was like nowadays where they're releasing all these HD remakes and everything of games, which again that's another story. I'm freaking sick of it at this point. Well, it's um, actually really smart. Yeah. I'll tell you why yeah. Yeah. later. Well, how, wh- why? What better time than talk to talk about it now? Okay. Well, basically, <laughs> now in this generation where everybody's switching consoles. It's very smart to get them into the franchises that they don't know. So, for instance, somebody switching from Xbox to PlayStation, they've never played Uncharted or God of War or any of those but games. It's a perfect time for you to make a re-release collection. Only I, I agree with with Uncharted, God of War, don't no, because they're only releasing three. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying it would be smart for them to re-release some of the God of War. Yeah, but they've God, they've been going hard at HD remakes of these games. Yeah, because they're trying to open up because isn't it like the like ridiculous amount of people switching from the 360 to yeah, PS4? It is. And so Xbox, it's PS4. really smart for them to get a lot of people didn't own a PS3. They don't know these games. Well, I like I like they're not exactly accomplishing this, but I kind of like the what Microsoft tried to do was the one central console. I want one one console that I can play all these games that I love. I, I love I love my old legacy consoles at the same time. I don't really want to break them out and have to hook up all the cables and try to find connectors that fit today's TVs. It's, it would be nice to just have it on one centralized console. I'm, I'm totally cool with HD remakes. Uh, oh, no, more, I, I don't mind them. As... And, uh, either give me HD remakes or backwards compatibility. Right. Or both. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind them as uh, as like, hey, let's throw some games out here and there. But to me, it just seems like they're just starting to throw out HD remakes of everything all the time now. Yeah, I mean, now's the time to do it. It makes more sense now than it did. Just make me a game. PS2 to PS3. They need, they need more. They need more good original games right now. I'm not arguing that, but I That's mean, if you're gonna make HD it. remakes, now's the time when people are switching but to your console. You don't have to have that skill of a, a studio to make an HD remake. So I mean, you can put them on. If you want it done right. Well, actually, yeah, actually, so. Sony actually has a studio that they partner with a lot called Bluepoint, and they actually do all of their ports in like six weeks. Yeah, so I mean, like, if you if you got one studio just taking care of all that, you're leaving all your you know, your high profile developers studios. Well, usually the studios. I was I was looking at this other day. A lot of times, the studios who made the game don't do the HD remakes. Yeah, exactly. Right. They, they 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 have a or they'll have like I guess. Somebody was trying to give um, three four three a hard time because they weren't doing all the bug fixes for um, Master Chief Collection. They're like, I can't believe they're not doing that. They're like, that's fine for them not to do the bug fixes. They're working on Halo Five right now. Like, it's not like it's not getting done. It's just getting done by a different team. Which I have to say, knowing what we know and doing what we've done where we work with software, can you imagine taking something as messed up as this, somebody else's code, somebody else's complete development? Getting it plopped in your lap and being told fix this, yeah. like I honestly have to give these dudes huge amounts of props. That like I don't I didn't I hate getting projects from other people where they just started it, let alone something that's been done out in a steaming pile of garbage and said you got to fix it. Yep. Like honestly, those guys are great doing that. I hate dealing with other people's stuff because everybody's got their own little nuances. Everybody's got their own little way of doing with it. So you got to figure out what that person did. You gotta figure out how it really works. Documentation, God knows how if theirs is like everybody else's on the planet, it's probably meh. Yeah. So that's my little side note is good on these people who who do the ports and everything because they're dealing with something that isn't even theirs. Right. Hey, they give us a fourth game for free. I'm not I'm not all that fifth. Fifth, okay. I I forgot. ODST? What do you mean you forgot? There's... I forgot how many were in the the original. You forgot the fourth one was the fourth one in the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, like I, I couldn't help it. How many? How many? They, what was the fourth one they included on here? Halo, Halo four. four. Is it on here? See, it, pre- it goes after three. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, but I, I didn't know if they included Reach <laughs> or ODST on here. He's no. got you there. Oh. Okay. ODST's coming free for people who yeah. played it before December nineteenth, which was not me. I right. For well, I hope they can keep uh, keep track of that because. That was the whole uh, the whole issue with the achievements for uh, that we couldn't <laughs> for the track the um, whatever server they use to keep track of uh, Xbox One unlocking achievements uh, the information wasn't properly being pinged or some crap. Fun story and, with that. And uh, I just hope they can keep track of whenever we started playing it. Fun story with that. So I got this for Christmas. My brother signed in with his Xbox account. I was logged in with mine. Mm-hmm. We played and beat Halo One in a day. He got every single achievement. It did not ping a single one for me. And I was like, 
pissed for like four, it took four days. Yeah. And after four days, I was playing like fours of five, and I swear to God, for thirty straight minutes, it popped achievements. I was like, just stop! I can't! I can't take any more achievements. Yeah. Did, didn't you please. feel feel so good though at that point in time? Yeah. No, it was just it was insane because I was like, oh, here's. Here's all my achievements in the middle of playing another game. It's just, it was obscene how many times that happened. And plus, a year later, I was like, we shouldn't be having these problems right now. Yeah. Granted, that's just my. my they just released opinion. a patch that fixed the um, party issues that caused that tournament Ooh, to be canceled. Too soon, too late. Well, they they rescheduled the tournament or the, the series or whatever they're calling that now. But um, I don't know. I'm pretty excited for. I, I think that that franchise model would be really cool. Or that um, platform would be would be pretty fun. I mean, kind of. And here's the problem with people will say, "Well, DLC is pretty much doing that." And it's not because as anybody who's ever bought DLC, very rarely do you buy DLC and you're like, "Yeah, that added value." It only adds something to a game you're already invested in. Yeah. Like, and it doesn't add a ton because they can't. If am, they, am I gonna buy a game because it was DLC? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Like if. Skyrim would be the closest. Yeah, Skyrim and Fallout 3 again. I'm a huge fanboy. I will throw that out now. So obviously those are two games I thought the DLC was really great. Like, like, yeah. Would you would you buy it and say I'm gonna buy the DLC like from the beginning? Like, that's just not DLC. Never, very rarely adds very much to it. You can ride a dragon in Skyrim or the DLC. Who wouldn't want to do that? Which one? Yeah, it's like the, uh, the, the dragon dragonborn. One. I think that's the one I've got. I, I, yeah, because I didn't get the one where you turn into vampires. I got the other one. I'm still working through it, too. I think I, I've got all of them, maybe. I got all of them for Fallout 3. Borderlands is another one I got all of them for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like to see if someone try something different besides episodic things, because I feel like that's what everybody tries with DLC or any type of expansion. Ooh, what? I would like, I'd, like, I'd like to see somebody try it, invent something I've never seen before. And Who does like episodic? Games. What? Nobody does episodic, except for Telltale. Yeah, but I'm so, like every like even DLC to a degree is kind of like an episode, no isolated. DLC is usually like a more fleshed out side quest. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm. Oh, I'm saying like I want I want something that continues the main story and it gives you a big chunk of the next story. Like it it plays. You ruined my next argument. Coherently, there, you said big chunk. Yeah, like I don't want like an, I don't I don't want to go in and be like all right this is gonna be a three hour DLC for ten bucks. Like, I want gotcha. something that adds a chunk to the story. It adds, it carries it forward. So, yeah, so that's a little dangerous. Like, I would like it if it was it was like that, but, like, I didn't know it was another chunk of the story. What do you mean? Like, because I feel like what they would do is they take one story and just chop it into pieces. I like when it feels like one story completes, mm-hmm. and then it feels like a totally different story. Well, that's just a new game, then. That's yeah, I rather I rather have that model than. That's, uh, well, that's what we have already. It's it's kind of it's kind of iffy though. Uh, so, sometimes I'm just tired of a game. Yeah. I don't want to touch anymore. Um, well, all this this is all things considered. It's something we're interested in. It, it'd be it'd be neat given the game. Like whatever game you really enjoy, apply this model to that game. But it you, sound you gotta cut it off somewhere. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just as a platform. It, it it lasts a couple of years and then they wrap it up. However, they wrap it up. Yeah. Or you could go the other way with it and. Um, Make it just a platform like Madden. Like me and you, Rich, were talking about this. Yeah. You take you take Madden because honestly, they, as much as they talk about our physics have done this, that no, they freaking haven't. You haven't done anything. What you do is you go in and you change a two to a four for some stupid stat, and that's just for that game. I mean, you could at least with Madden, you could have a base. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, update update the physics, update the graphics. Uh, maybe they don't do you know, add a add a few add a few features to. It. Well, I mean, you look at from sixty four to a. Now, I mean, the graphics are... Why would we do that? What? Madden... What, Madden. Why did you just throw Madden from the 64 to Madden on a PlayStation? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it, it had to progress up to it, though. Well, yeah, but I'm, we're talking like like just a, a two to three year cycle here. Per... per well, fine, if you want to look short term, man. Yeah. <laughs> man, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I want an love. adapter for my PlayStation 4 to play my Super Nintendo cartridges. This is garbage. They're just greedy. They just want me to buy discs. Hey, that was the golden days. Yeah. If N- if NFL games were like that, that would be awesome. I would love that. I'd love to like put in like NFL two five K and just update the rosters and then <laughs> no, just play that. Downstairs and Dreamcast. Yeah, I mean, I I would like to like something like that for those games, but they'll never do it unless 
they think they can make more money from that than selling a full sixty dollar game oh, no. of Madden every year. Yeah, because generally, what's good for what's what's good for consumers isn't necessarily what's good for a company, and that really sucks. Well, I mean, if people would accept that, then. Maybe I mean it might cut down on your development costs. Yeah, that's so what I, yeah, that was my argument. Is if you just have a base and you don't have to quote update your physics and engine and all the stuff that I'm like ninety nine percent sure they don't do anyway. Like, just put out some rosters. That's not hard to do. Put out because modders do it on PC games. Heck, I mean, Grand Theft Auto Four was based off a uh, ping pong engine, a physics engine. You're going to have to explain that one to me. So so the physics engine they used for Grand Theft Auto 4, they used for, uh, what game was it? The ping pong game. Um, oh, I can't There's remember. no way this is true. Pong? Yeah. No, not <laughs> the original Pong for whatever. <laughs> Tony. Boom. It's come a long way. <laughs> Boom. Up two stars. Boom. Up three stars. Boom. National Guard. It's got you there. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know if I believe that one. Yeah, that sounds. You might have to check your sources on this. That sounds like uh, that sounds like forwards from grandma. Yeah, I might actually have to check my sources because that's actually from a friend. But he's. <laughs> oh, he's I heard it from a guy. Dude. I think he's no. cool. But hey, I mean, I'm gonna say given that, given that though, he's 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 been right. That has to be. There's no way it's based on the. In, you know what? The, the engine. Okay. Well, that look. that ping pong well, game look. for some reason maybe bought the engine or licensed it for a ping pong game? No, the the pong game was or the ping pong game was first. They do I have like a Rockstar that. table tennis game. No, I know that. So maybe they borrowed it from that. I don't know. I don't believe him either, but I don't I don't believe that, that would be the engine that Stranger they things have happened. That's true. Like, I don't know. That's I mean, it's how, extremely far fetched. How how hard is it to believe that though? I mean extremely it's a, hard it's a hard physics hard engine. To say someone do you know what like this is it, he does make sense. It is just the physics engine. I'm not. I'm not it. talking about graphics. When you go, I'm not talking about. If you say about... I'm going to build a physics engine for a ping pong game, it's going to be radically different than an open world mayhem creator. I mean, is what you're trying to say that like it was just like an Unreal where every game kind of used this engine, or are you saying that this one? I, I'm saying the the physics engine for this ping pong game was so good that they decided to use it for GTA. There's no way they might have said, "Hey, this has some good elements we're going to use," or they might have incorporated it into the GTA engine. Okay. But I don't believe for a minute they just said, "Screw it, we're going to use a ping pong engine for Grand Theft Auto." Well, no, it's not. It's not when he says the engine. He doesn't mean like the whole entire engine. He just means the physics portion of like yeah. that engine, like a graphical engine, a that's physics just, engine. Yeah, that's what I just said. I said that it. It, maybe they said we like this part of it. We're going to use part of this. But, but they use that ours. term in the industry for for that. That I they mean, say that portion engine. What 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 is hard? I mean, you have collision. You have you know conservation of momentum and wind resistance, gravity. Yeah, all of the yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but I don't I don't believe it. It doesn't make that much sense to me at all. Well, think of it. It's just a relation to a ping pong ball. They just apply all the schematics to all other objects. Rage. So, it uses the rage engine. Also, when you look at uh, when you look at the collision of cars, that, that just tells you the whole engine. Sorry. Yeah. When when you look at the the collision of cars in Grand Theft Auto, doesn't it remind you a little bit of a ping pong? No. It doesn't I can't ever say it. in the history of ever I played Grand Theft Auto and gotten a car wreck and said, "Damn, does anybody think it looks like ping pong?" <laughs> <laughs> Two bouncing objects. That's that's like anything though. Anything hitting anything else is going to look like oh, anything that's... hitting anything else. I, I don't know. It's yeah. that's kind what of getting at. Which Halo game are we playing? I bet you I know what you're Halo. talking about. Probably the the bullet the bullet physics engine. Okay, which is called Bullet Physics Library as a company. So here's the three engines that are listed in Wikipedia: Rage with Euphoria, which is a human fi- uh, engine, mm-hmm. and Bullet Physics, which is by Bullet Software, and I'm not... It, it's been... I mean, this thing's been used on Windows, Linux, OS X, iOS, Android, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Wii. Yeah. I can see this bullet physics being used in a ping pong game. And maybe it Possibly. is. Possibly. But this is literally just a bullet physics engine. Yeah, that's... So my, my statement is still valid. No, it's not at all. Yeah, it, it is. It no. was used in the game. No, you said that it Grand Theft Auto 4 was used, used the same engine as a... Ping pong game, full stop. You didn't say, "Hey, part of it was this." And we'll have a recording. I mean, we can always it, go back and listen. That to is it. still, even if I stopped, it still is a valid statement. No, no, this is this is not even. You're not. You're not. Homie, don't play that. 
<laughs> I don't know what street you just said. <laughs> No, uh, the, the actual game is Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, because I figured Rockstar had their own engine, and they do. Rage, and they borrowed, um, or they, they used Euphoria Wait, and Bullet Ro- Physics. Rockstar owns the Rage engine? Yep. Uh, but, uh... So, episodic uh, content. Hold on. I even have a list in here of games that it was used in. Is one of them tabletop? Games using bullets created by professional game developers for the video console. So, here's the games that use the, that engine. Okay. Stop me when you hear a ping pong. Toy Story 3, Grand Theft Auto 4, just and 5, play. and Red Dead Redemption, Trials HD, Free Realms, Hot Wheels Battle Force 5, Gravitronics, Madagascar, Regnum Online, some MMORPG, Blood Drive, Hydro Thunder Hurricane, uh, it says Sonic the Hedgehog, but it says there's a citation needed, so it was probably an adaptation of it, and yeah. Dirt. And it was also used in movies. Your friend is a liar. Your friend is a liar. No, no, I, I will look it up. There might be a, I just, you just looked, did. I just looked it up. I don't trust your sources. <laughs> okay, have fun with that. Okay. Might, there might be some ping pong stuff going on Toy Story. Low down, dirty But liar. that's not a ping pong game. That's Toy Story game. It has ping pong. It has a ping pong. Well, in that case, then I just, apparently I bought a tennis <laughs> game with Grand Theft Auto V. You did. And a golf game. Uh, Natural Motion is the developer of Euphoria. Yeah. It's a human physics engine. So anyway, that is. Uh, thank you for that tangent. Yeah, uh, I think we're. Nick I think is we're categorically quite wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and say that. I'm not editing that out either. <laughs> it's okay. I put a lot of ca- You should see the captions I put above my own head when I spout my mouth off. It's okay. okay. I think Brandon's gonna try it this week. We'll see what he comes up with. Oh no, I don't want Brent, this one. You're not the caption master for this one. No, no thanks. Uh, maybe uh, next scrum. Choose next wisely. Scrum. Scrums are scrums take a hot minute. Uh, but anyway, so that was that was, that was wrong. Did you feel bad? No, I I I I'm, I'm not convinced I'm wrong yet. If you do, go ahead and ping me the link. Um, <laughs> man, we went on a tangent there. <laughs> Ping pong. Was there, was there not really a friend in this? Was it really just you? Yes. <laughs> it's just like that. He, he didn't. He didn't have I feel like yeah. I feel like if. if it, if there was a friend, you'd be like, oh, screw him. He's wrong. He lied, he lied to me. But it's like, no, my friend's right. It's my, he, he told me. I've got friends. I'm just No, I don't. Dog. That's poor, poor dog. You just, that dog's so mistreated. Anyway, so sorry about these tangents. Um, it's been fun. I think the So anyway, episodic I think would be cool, but it would have to be done by the right developer with the right game. Um, I don't think it could be all willy-nilly. It's not going to happen but pretty much for the reasons you said. They make the, the, the established games make too much money that are year on yearly cycles. They make too much money now on a yearly cycle. I don't think there's... Because I honestly, if it was advantageous, they would have done it by now. They're not stupid. They want to make money. So, yeah, it's either a dying franchise or a new franchise with would, an indie person. Honestly, I think it would have to be a new franchise. It would have to be something because I could see it helping an, uh, an indie because they could put out a smaller starting base. Um, where the bulk of the work goes in with getting your, your engines for ping pong and all your other stuff yeah. thrown in there, and then they could just add content to it later. Um, I could see that being pretty cool for a startup. You know, I'm this this goes on to a completely different tangent. I don't really want to go deep down this rabbit hole, but um, you know, personally, I'm kind of more just boarding the uh, train of crowdfunding model for games. That's a whole other topic. It's a whole degree. It's a whole other one, but it, it as you know, if you want that for like, a episodic, you know, pay see if people are interested in the episodic. Otherwise, just don't make it. That's like the ultimate pre-order, though. It is, and that's kind that's of like, goes, that's it, like not even that's not even ordering it before it's launched. That's ordering it before it's starting. Or halfway. True. Or or part yeah. of the. Yeah, I mean, it could be it could be partially. Uh, it, it goes along with the comment earlier about you. It's it's a developer you really trust, and you know maybe, maybe if it's something that uh, you know they they did a good job on their last one, you say okay, I want more. But if they screw up, then obviously you know. I'm yeah, but the gonna... problem with crowdfunding is all they have to do is just get to a certain point, and your money's gone. The. What are you doing? Kind of. Sheet? No, it's it's how. gone. If it's funded and they don't produce anything because of whatever reason, it's gone. There's there's some civil uh, suits no, that come through that though. Sheet. They they are gonna fail. They some of them have actually I, I've heard of a couple. Well, those ones are just because it's outright fraud. Yeah. There's a difference between making because I want to say Kickstarter somebody has like like a, some good faith effort clause or some bull crap where you have to at least 
you have to at least show that you tried. Like you can't just I can't go on Kickstarter and be like I'm gonna take you guys to the moon. Give me twenty yeah. bucks a piece and then just take the money and run. Like that one will end up in suit, but. But I mean, again, going with the comment, it's a developer that you you've tried, you trust. I'd be worried that a developer I trusted on Kickstarter, to be honest. Well, they no, not necessarily. Several right now. Look at the guy who's doing the Castlevania, uh, uh, yeah. the Mega Man successor, and the Mega Man successor, and the Banjo Kazooie one. Yeah. yeah, ukulele. I mean, we just got three examples. Yeah, right and there. I'm also still very wary of all three of those. Oh hell no! They, what? Yeah, they'll deliver. You you're are no yeah. longer the captain of the hype train. Yeah. You're the negative Nancy. Yeah. You're the hype train. That has everything to do with the yeah. hype train. What? You're I'm... anti-hyping. Yeah. You're, you're de-hyping. You're bizarro hyper. hype train. Yeah. Bizarro. I'm saying I, I look at those with a healthy dose. I look at a lot of the stuff with a healthy dose of I, That's I'm not what the hype train you know, that is supposed to do. So what you, what you named is people. So here's the thing. So and games are, that they create. You know what? That's, this is games they that's create. That's a valid. That's a valid point for for any normal person. But we're relying on you, man. These yeah. are games that were that were created with full studio and publisher support initially. That's right. I like to have cautious optimism with these things whenever it's just them doing it on their own. That's, actually, that's you, what I'm saying. If you take that's out the corporate, the corporate publishers out of it, it might actually be better. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah you have that's to take also out all the, true. You know, all the corporate money and the corporate connections. Yeah, but and you give them your own money. But that having insane. been said, though, their teams are about about the same size as they when they develop those games. And not, not only that, they've got a lot They're of the same close. creative heads. It's not just like the producer. I'm, I'm still going to be, be like, skeptical. I'm not going to say I, I would never do it because I swear I'm probably jumping on this ukulele probably. train. I think, I think you should. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I've, got it, I've got it on my uh, on my watch list because... Uh, we, will, we will get you... We will get you committed by, I say, two, one or two game scrubs from now. Yeah, probably. We'll, we'll, we'll get you committed. Because I want to say it's got like, what, 30-something days left? Um, I've I've an alert. It's going to let me know five days out. Um, but that one, I'm not saying like I don't think it's a good thing. But I'm saying you have to still understand like just because this 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 one guy or this group of guys made a game before with this other stuff in play, like it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be perfect now. Because I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. there's a huge difference. Like when somebody says, "Hey, Platonic," the guys who are doing ukulele. There's a huge difference between Platonic putting something out. And back to my favorite example of a, studio, of a developer ever is Bethesda. Like, Bethesda says, hey, we're going to go do this. I'm going to be like, all right, I mean, I'm going to give you my money. And I know you're gonna, I know what you're going to deliver. Platonic has not had a game out. Platonic is a new new company as of this calendar year. Yeah, they, but what about people like Supergiant Games where you trust that they've made two amazing indie games and they're going to make... They're gonna make another Kickstarter. What about Kojima? That's different. I'm I'm just I'm talking about just the ones that were listed here. Mighty Number no. Nine, uh, Bloodstain, and Ukulele are all brand new studios. What about Kojima? What about Kojima? Well, I said he was gonna make Silent Hill. We will see how that happened. Yeah. Uh, wait. I'm, That's different. I didn't. That, that game didn't get to the point where they could take my money. Oh, well, I'll talk about that. That's, what, that's what. That's what I said earlier. Yeah, but I mean, how Bethesda? How are they gonna take your money beforehand, though? I wouldn't give it to him beforehand. Okay. I, I'm thought, not, I'm I not, thought you said you would. I don't understand. Well, I said they're going to get my money. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not really understanting the point we're going with right Yeah, here. I thought you said yeah. you'd give... Okay. No, no, no. I wouldn't... And I would be, like I said, I would be concerned if Bethesda said, hey, we're doing a Kickstarter. I'd be like, what the F happened? Like, what, what, what happened in your corporate structure that you need a Kickstarter? So if the Kickstarter would fall out, you wouldn't, you wouldn't Kickstarter? That's not even fair. You can't say that because but you know would I you? would. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would still say it would it would be prefaced with as I as I pulled out the credit card out of my wallet I'd be like I can't believe they need to kickstart this what's my security code You're right. <laughs> all right it's one, 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 but okay. you'd have a fair level of confidence that yeah. if the yeah. right people were yeah. behind it shut up and take my money that's yeah. pretty much what it would be yeah, I mean I'm it's not a, saying I'm not saying that these people won't deliver whoa. I'm saying I'm going to be more skeptical of Platonic than I am of Bethesda it's a it's a very good gauge of interest though it is well that's like the the blood stain from what I read like basically the the Kickstarter is to get initial funds and to basically show the interest that so they can get bigger backers because it's going to be more than Kickstarter can really provide for money. Right. Well, not that it could provide, but that they will get out of it. When they're probably, I mean, honestly, if they're doing it at that point, um, I, I know Platonic, they're, they said they were working at diminished wages. Uh, I, have you seen how, what, how far they've gone already? They, they, that's why I'm questioning it because they've, they said that back when they started the campaign and now they're at, you know, 2.3 million. 
Two point something, yeah. Which would be like 15, uh, 1, 1, pounds. Yeah, what are they at now? They added a stretch goal at two, two I, million pounds. I checked today. It's one million five hundred. What currency are you guys talking about? That's that's what that's yeah. what the uh, stretch goals are in. That's crazy. I didn't know they were a uh, British base. I didn't either. Race. British what? based. Oh, this is British race. British raced. Uh, let's see where they're at right uh, now. These controls are. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> That was beautiful. I, I yeah, 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 their stretch goal for if they hit two point four million dollars is a uh, free first first round of DLCs free to all backers. Yeah, and I, I don't know they're they're, they're probably close. Well, listen, they were they, they got were a few four. hundred. Yeah, they were a few hundred thousand away. I don't know that, if they get that. I I think that'll be really close. They got thirty days. I think they can just barely make it. Yeah, they're at, This is kind of cool. I don't know if anybody knows, but Chrome auto converts the currency. Oh, nice. Yeah, I I don't like that because I couldn't tell what the stretch goal was. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. You have to hit the button. It's it's one million five hundred fifty uh, fifty ish. I think. Well, the stretch goal is now two million pounds, which or two million, yeah. So it's like three point one. I want to say it's million is uh, what that translates to. And Bloodstained, I think, might hit two million by the end of the day. Hopefully, they will. Yeah, the ukulele is at two point four. So yeah, they got they got a lot to go. I don't know if they'll get that. It'd be it'd be close. Well, they'll they'll probably have another close push at the end. But anyway. Man, we totally went down that rabbit hole. That's fine. Sorry, I, that was I'm, my bad. I'm ready to do it again too. I, we can do it in more detail. We, I think we need a, a whole game scrum, kind of more that direction. We can do that as we start to close because we're all going to close within close to each other. I need, I need to do the design a weapon thing for my LinkedIn profile. Oh, that's by the way, that's not two hundred dollars. That's two thousand. Oh, that's all right. Well, let's see. What is it? Just five hundred dollars. I'm surprised you didn't go for the one where you could actually be in the game, Brandon. Oh uh, well, I. He's in the credits. <laughs> I saw yeah, that. Yeah, credits. Yeah. You should have done that. You should, dude, go back and refund it. It's like only like five thousand dollars. No, only. Which game is it? <laughs> Pretty sure I'd get. I'll put like his blood portrait stain. in the bloodstained game. <laughs> you get it. Well, I thought one was like a character. Or is it just a portrait? One's a portrait, I think. There's another one where you get to go out to Tokyo or go. You go out to Japan yep. and have have you have like dinner at this like. Like I guess like haunted themed area, and you hang out and play. You do a Twitch stream with them, yep. play some games. So wait, Jeez, Brandon, when, when's vacation? Yeah, I died. Tell me about it. <laughs> no, what I, I I think it would have been sweet if we'd uh, pooled our money together and did like a game scrum for two thousand dollars. Not you, you just yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk over <laughs> me right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> no, I, ping yeah, pong. Pull, pull together uh, something. I don't know. I think it'd be sweet to. Have, Fun to, uh, a game scrum weapon it. we put it on our yeah, LinkedIn how profile. Cool would that be? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, not great. that one in particular, but something. But the, what I do like about Bloodstain. that Kickstarter specifically, Bloodstain, is you get a uh, physical game. Absolutely. And you get a backer edition um, case slip cover or something. Yeah, and backer edition exclusive content. Yeah, the think. content's cool, but like I like I like stuff and like no Kickstarter, like the the ukulele ones. Obviously, it's it's all digital. It'd be cool if I could get it, but I mean, kicks, the, theirs is thirty-two bucks to get a console version plus the uh, toy box, the sand, the PC sandbox. Get the uh, sixty-four bit one, it's like five hundred dollars. Sixty-four bit shaders is, or no, it's it, it's basically oh, it's a uh, it's a USB drive. Card. Yeah, yeah, that looks like well, it's it's shrink wrapped in a Nintendo sixty-four style box with a Nintendo sixty-four cartridge. That's really just a sixty-four gig hard drive. Yeah. Yeah, or um, flash drive. That's really cool, but it's yeah. five hundred dollars. Yeah. No, they got to, one of the goals was the sixty four Nintendo sixty four shaders, and they got that goal, that stretch goal. Sixty four shaders. So nice. I guess to give it the look of Nintendo sixty four. I thought they already had that. No, have yeah, you seen? Have that's you, cool. Have you seen this game? I mean, it's it's got the same artistic style. It looks completely different. It's just got a higher polygon count. Well, much higher. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that. We're yes, talking that's three not, generations that's difference, not, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, what, I mean, I mean, that's why I said higher. That didn't the, say how much I'm higher. I'm the hype train. I, I, I need a name for you now, Rankin. What? <laughs> it's, got more, it's got more polygons than 64. <laughs> it, that what? is an accurate statement. I'm not saying yes, it isn't. you there. I'm not saying it's not accurate. I'm just saying that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, I mean, my car out there is a little bit more powerful than the one that came out in 1894. It's true. It I mean, is true. you could have a hybrid, though. What? Never mind. I'm, I'm being surprised. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, part of that's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two point, or the 1.1 million was in 64 shader mode. 
So my guess is it's going to be kind of like Halo, where like there'll be at least some point where it'll, it'll kick back to the old style, hmm. yeah. which would be really cool. And I'm excited that one got. And that uh, that same stretch goal was a new uh, DK rap. I should actually go back yes. and read the stretch goals now. Yeah, stretch goals are really cool. Uh, the simultaneous release one got hit, so it's going to yeah. be all platforms at once. It's oh built in uh, Unity. Dude. So the Unity engine is ran on just about everything. So they're like, because people are like, oh, how are they going to pull that off? And from what I've read, like games built on Unity are actually yeah. relatively easy to port between the different consoles. I looked at it. I actually looked at building games for Unity once, and uh, it's like $2,000 per console. It depends. There's uh, the, it, the console develop. The, the, if you talk to the console, <laughs> de- like Nintendo has a program you can sign up for. Yeah. Uh, and they'll provide you with a lot. But you, yeah. The Linux, Linux, I believe, was a bit, um, you know, there was, like, I think one that was free, and then I think there was one at diminished price, but it, it kind of gets expensive when you start talking about consoles. Well, the thing, like, well, the console ones, like, I actually contacted Nintendo because I was interested in the Unity thing. Yeah. Um, but Nintendo has a lot of programs for, the problem is, usually it's, like, with... Nintendo's they, not indie friendly. They're a lot more now. They're more, but I, I'd say you're going to be have better luck with Sony or Microsoft. But uh, they have they have programs that help because um, I was reading about it. They have programs that help like new developers to afford the dev kits for Unity mm-hmm. because they've got a partnership with Unity. Oh, that's cool. So they uh, they help you out because they want more indies on their on their console. They need them. So um, anyway, we totally went long on yes. tangents. Sorry, but this is this is fun. Yes, I had fun. Yeah. Um, we got out tangents. We on next worse. week, we are playing Witcher. I'm excited. Actually, it'll be tomorrow because we'll release this on Monday. So tomorrow we're playing Witcher. So it'll yeah, be a and good determination whether I actually buy the game. Yeah. After yeah. that session, I will decide if I'm going to buy it right then and there. Yeah. Or not. So we're going to be doing a live stream um, on our on our Twitch. We'll have um, video. I'll be. I think all you got are all you guys coming. I'm Tuesday. Going. I'm going to okay. be there. Yeah, I can be here. Okay. Yeah. Um, to, uh, tomorrow, according to when you're watching this. Um, we're going to do a live stream session of Witcher. Uh, here we'll have the video and everything like that, doing some commentary. Um, I've watched a little bit of it. It looks really, really, really cool. So I got it, and we're gonna we're gonna see what it looks like. I wish I would have done it with Bloodborne. I did, but I'm an idiot, and I put my PlayStation camera with the with the microphone on on top of the PlayStation. Which, if you play Bloodborne, it gets quite warm and quite loud from the fan. So you can just hear the whole time. Because that fan is on like 11. So, yeah, I probably would have tuned you up by five minutes in. Yeah, no, it's horrible. I don't, I can't use it. And I also hadn't figured out the uh, HD streaming yet. So. No, I did that time. It was something else. Anyway, so yeah, tune into that. It'll be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sure everybody else in freaking Twitch will have it too, but we're cooler than them. So, um, any other announcements or anything like that? Mm, I don't think so. We're going to get our E3 prediction slash bingo. Oh, bingo, yes. yes. So we'll be getting that here soon. Uh, mine's going to be the worst, and I have like two things, all the rest are going to be free. Because yeah. I don't know what to... Free put. space. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what but, to put yeah, in Yeah, because I announced all those, all those games that there were going to be my spaces. I'm no freaking idea what I'm going to do for my bingo. Yeah. yeah, does it count if they already announced it? You if it's not official, it. if, if, if the developer hasn't, because like... Rich thinks Fallout 4 is not going to be announced, even though, like... At, at the conference, they will not announce it. That so is my Rich prediction. So Rich had some very strong narcotics on the way over, and for some reason thinks they're not going to announce Fallout 4 yes. at the conference. Just to piss you off. Just to piss me off. Hey, I ha- sent him a letter. <laughs> Half-Life 4, man. Half-Life yeah. 4. It's so big. They skip over skip three. Half to yeah. <laughs> Half-Life <laughs> 5, Lois. <laughs> Rankin. Next scrum, we're going to teach Rankin. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> It's so one. good, you don't even need three. Also, Rankin's our PR guy because he gives wildly generic statements that aren't <laughs> wrong, but they're still ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> the 64 had less polygons. <laughs> and the internet's faster on a PS4 as well. Hey, so. just be big enough to be right. Oh, man. I guess that's how life works. <laughs> I guess. But all right, well, I guess tune in then, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right, bye. Bye.